Hello music fans, welcome to the Death by Unicorn channel. Let's talk about nine new albums that came out over the past week and I'll give my first impressions of them. We'll go in my order of preference, starting with The Deer Hunter and Migrant Returned. This is progressive rock with indie rock influences. It leans a little bit more into the indie rock vibes than most of their albums. And this is a reimagining of their fifth album. Um, this is a great American band. It's hard for me to think about rating this album by The Deer Hunter because I really love the original version of the album as well. And this is so similar to the deluxe version of Migrant that's on Spotify already, but the songs are just in a different order, might have some slight differences in the production and arrangement. And there are three new songs that I never heard before, Middle Ground, Like Crazy, and Owls. I think maybe they were released before on some bonus collection thing that I, I don't I didn't hear it until now and everything on here is great so by that metric this is easily a top 20 album of the year contender for me but I also don't really like when bands spend time reimagining existing songs I prefer they work more on new material so I really thought the deer hunter would have their album Sonya by now and I'd much rather that they had focused their energy on that but there are three new songs on here, or new to me, uh, so if you count those, it's at least an amazing EP's worth of new music. And if you just counted those, it would be my favorite EP of the year. But I think I might count this as a full album and include it on my year-end list since it's reimagined. Um, I actually think it might be better than the original Migrant album because it maintains the quality and it's just longer, so there's just more good stuff to listen to. Uh, quite often with other remakes, Possibly another one I'll be talking about today, spoiler alert. The new version isn't as good as the previous version, but in this case, this one is better. So uh, well done, Deer Hunter. Uh, although I still wish you spent time on a brand new album instead. My favorite track on here is probably the same as my favorite track on the original, which is Whisper. It sounds almost exactly the same on this version. Main difference I noticed was the new version doesn't have the loud string part in the intro that the original version had. I do kind of miss that part. I like that part in the original, but it's still just such a great song. The pre-chorus into the chorus in particular is so amazing and satisfying to hear every time. Next album I listen to is Advent Horizon and A Cell to Call Home. This is progressive metal slash progressive rock. It's the third album by this American band. A lot of great guitar shredding and piano playing on here. There's a song featuring Jordan Rudis of, from Dream Theater, and he does a great keyboard solo as always. Fans of Dream Theater and Rush will like this band. It's all clean vocals, but it's still kind of progressive metal. It's got some heavy stuff mixed in with progressive rock and more adventurous stuff and some soft stuff in there too. There's a lot of emotion on this album. Some of the lyrics sound a little Jesus-y to me, but I didn't look into it much. Uh, those types of religious or spiritual lyrics that are not usually my thing, but the music is so great here that I look past some of the lyrical cheesiness and spirituality. There's great female vocals from Kristen McDonald on the songs Your Flaws and Truth. Uh, this is the first album of theirs that I've heard, but I really look forward to hearing their past work now. And next one on my list today is Apotheus and Ergo Atlas. This is progressive metal. It's the third album by this band from Portugal. Fans of Opeth, uh, in particular Opeth's progressive death metal material, will like this. This album manages to be both heavy and powerful with great death growling vocals and heavy parts with distorted guitars. Uh, but it also has beautiful and hypnotic stuff with great clean vocals and soft parts. And it's really interesting because even the heavy distorted guitar and growling parts sound relaxing to me. It's got this doomy quality to it where you can put it on, get in the zone and just feel relaxed the whole way through. Fourth one I want to talk about today is Trevor Rabin and his album Rio. This is rock with pop, progressive and country influences. And it's his sixth solo album. This is a South African musician well known for his time as the guitarist of Yes in the 80s and early 90s when he replaced Steve Howe. 
my favorite track on this is the second track, Push, but a lot of the tracks are really great. There's a lot of variety. Um, there's straightforward pop rock, there's prog rock, there's country, there's jazz. The guitar playing is really great. Some parts even sound like it's the virtuoso Steve Vai playing, but I think it's all Trevor Rabin, and wow, he can play. Uh, check this out if you like Trevor Rabin era, yes, or if you just want to hear music by a great composer and guitar player who has lots of different styles and tricks up his sleeve. His vocals and harmonies on here are great too. When I listen to this album, in particular the country music sounding parts, I think to myself, wow, if all country music sounded this good, I'd probably be a country music fan. Uh, I'm sure there's great stuff out there like this in the country music world, uh, but I'm generally so turned off by country based on any that mainstream popular country I've heard. It all kind of sounds like garbage to me, uh, but this sounds really good. Fifth album on my list today is Giorgio and their album Saligat. This is progressive rock. It's the seventh album by this Norwegian band. The lyrics on here are not in English, so I don't really understand them. I assume they're all in Norwegian. The guitar playing here is great. Lots of jazz influence parts and cool key changes. My favorite track is Ura. Now let's talk about Toe Hider's latest EP, The Four Castles of Stelkorin. Uh, they're releasing 12 EPs this year. This is the third that they've released to people who aren't patrons. Uh, I think a lot more have been released if you are uh, if you follow Toe Hider on Patreon. This is the third that I've heard from them this year. It's progressive rock. It's got Celtic, acoustic, Indian folk influences. And this album sounds very medieval with that Celtic acoustic vibe, some Irish penny whistle moments too. So it kind of fits the theme where there's castles. My favorite track was the third track, Castle Nokistinane. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but it has some cool odd time signature stuff going on. I counted some parts in seven and there were some other parts that I couldn't quite count on first or second listen. I guess this is a concept EP about four castles where two are normal, one is evil, and one is cursed. His Bandcamp page explains the elaborate details of the concept, which I didn't really follow, but the songs here are really fun. Now let's change gears and go into some metalcore. I checked out Of Mice and Men and their album Tether. This is the eighth album by this American band. Very solid, well-executed metalcore with catchy hooks. But this isn't breaking any boundaries or doing anything too innovative. I don't think I'll go back to it too much. Uh, I checked it out because their old album, there's one of their old albums that I like. It's from 2011. It's called The Flood. That was their second album. Uh, so if you like this, I actually recommend listening to The Flood because uh, I find The Flood even better. So if you, or if you want to get into Of Mice and Men, that's where I would recommend starting, although I'm not an expert on their discography. Uh, I didn't think this album, Tether, their eighth album, was as good as their second, um, but it was still decent enough. Next, I got two more to go through in this video. Uh, this one is Dave Kersner and The Eye. It's an EP. It's kind of alternative rock with progressive influences. This is an American artist who co-founded the band Sound of Contact. It features six songs from his forthcoming solo concept album, Heart Landmines Volume 1, which will be out on October 18th. And it features singles and highlights from the album. I thought the lyrics for some of the tracks on here, like Dirty Girl, were a bit corny and not great. I was entertained and engaged by the lyrics of Dreaming in LA, but it still sounded a bit cliche to me. Um, I wish he leaned more into his progressive influences on here. A lot of these tracks just feel like they're ready for alternative rock radio. They're catchy and well-made, but they're not adventurous and as fun as I think he's capable of. And last album that I want to talk about is Roger Waters and his Dark Side of the Moon Redux. This is, I guess, psychedelic progressive rock. It's possibly the fifth solo studio album by Roger Waters, or maybe the 11th if you count things that aren't his main releases, like soundtracks he made, and opera he made, and other random recording sessions he did. This is a very stripped down, eerie 
after midnight version of the classic Pink Floyd album, The Dark Side of the Moon, one of the best selling albums of all time. So imagine Dark Side of the Moon without any David Gilmore guitar leads and with spoken word over all the more extended instrumental passages, no saxophone solos or anything like that. It sounds kind of creepy and eerie like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, but with vocals that sound like William Shatner mixed with Lou Reed, which is not a good thing. I don't know why he felt the need to do this. Could just be to capitalize on the success of the album on its 50th anniversary and do a cash grab. Um, Roger Waters, I think you're rich enough already. Uh, it's definitely interesting to listen to once if you're a fan of Dark Side of the Moon like I am, but I don't think I'll ever listen to it again, and I don't really think this should have even been made and released in the first place, to be honest. Um, I'd still listen to this album before just like a random average pop album, but that's not saying much. Uh, but I do think like a random prog album, even from a lesser known band, is likely to be far better than this. So there's so much great music out there. I really can't justify spending any more time on this silly project from Roger Waters that I don't think should exist. Um, but maybe you'll be interested in it, so don't let my uh, slightly negative review of it uh, discourage you from listening to it. I still encourage people to check it out once and form their own opinions. And that's it for my impressions on these nine new albums that came out over the past week. Let me know what you think of this, these ones. Is there anything else that came out recently that you think I might enjoy? Let me know down in the comments, and stay tuned for next time. Peace out.